I probably just spent way too much time trying to edit that. Hey, welcome back. It's Ben again. Today we're just taking a quick look at this little tiny popsicle robot I made because I was bored and just wanted to see how it works. So basically I made this little prototype robot since uh, in the future I plan on making a larger version of this type of robot arm. I have some 13 kilogram servos to use. Uh, right now we're just using these 9 gram micro servers so they don't have a lot of a torque or a lot of power but you get the job done if you're using some popsicle sticks. So not super powerful but really just wanted to kind of test out if I could do it, uh, how it would look if I made a, like I'm thinking of doing a 3D printed version of a larger robotic arm, which I think could turn out to be a really cool project. So basically just wanted to go over a little bit about what this does, how I did it, you know, show it off. So if we take a uh, closer up look, we can see here it's pretty rudimentary construction. It's just uh, the main body is probably three, four popsicle sticks total and we have a little popsicle stick base just to hold everything together. Um, for the joints, I just used some clear poster putty you can get from like Command, and I also combined that with some hot glue. I was just trying to use the poster putty by itself so that I could reuse these motors for another different project that I have, but uh, it wasn't holding together so well, so I ended up using hot glue in most places. So it's just four servo motors, mic the micrograms, uh, nine, servo nine gram servos. Um, so it's just the four basic movements of like your arm would have so we can rotate we can tilt back and forward We have another tilt. This would be kind of like your elbow and then we have a grabber So over here I have the Arduino which has all these bundles mess of wires coming out um, I I'll, Admittedly, I don't have the correct tools I would do to do this You'd probably want to use three potentiometers to control this otherwise it gets kind of janky we'll see in a second so i have a joystick and i have one potentiometer over here and the joystick also has a button click so if i hold this down we can see if i move this we got our x-axis rotation and you can see because we're using a uh, a joystick it gets kind of really jittery when we try to do this unfortunately um so this is kind of the center balance is 90 degrees so we can turn a whole 180 degrees to where you want to move do that and so if we push up, we can get the stick to put up. I've put some limiters on some of the directions of movement. So even if I push the stick all the way down, we can't go all the way down. Same if we go all the way up. If I push the stick all the way up, it's only going to go so far. This is to help, you know, help it for tipping over and crashing into the table. Um, if we click the button in, we get the little tweezers to move. Like that. Um, so they're just two thicker popsicle sticks I have right here. Um, ideally you'd want to put some sort of grippy substance in here if it's like a, a pot holder or some tape, something like that. Um, right now this is the two flat surfaces, so it doesn't work great for holding things, but let's take a pencil right here, we can put that in there. Oops. There, look, you can hold a pencil. Amazing. <laughs> Okay, so I can sort of hold a pencil. Again, a lot of this is because of the grippiness in here, it's too it's too flat, too smooth, so it just drops things. So if I were to do this again, I would definitely put something in here. Um, before I forget the other rotations, so if I turn this to the side, I got the other potentiometer back here, and that lets us turn this. And these movements can all be combined with each other, albeit a little a little wonky looking. Oh, yep, there we go. Um, so yeah, this is just a very again, a very rudimentary look at this type of robot. Um, this is like a little robot arm. It's the same exact kind of idea you'd see like in a production line, like in a car manufacturing plant where they have those robot arms off to the side. It's the same idea. They have those centers of rotation, the axes, the axes to move off of. Uh, ours just has four. Uh, a lot of arms sometimes will have a fifth one right here, which would be the wrist. So this part can rotate side to side. But otherwise, the way I would look at this, this is kind of like an arm upside down. So this would just kind of be your body moving side to side. This would be your shoulder, this would be your elbow, and then this is your hand. So you can really just make an old, your own model of it if you hold your arm, you can kind of follow the, the move of the robot. 
So, and with programming this, I just have it set up right now so that it's user control, but you can also have it set up to do certain tasks, or if you just want it to move in a certain order over and over again, you can do that too. All right, now I just have the user control because it's already pretty janky. <laughs> it's just gonna fall apart in a minute. Because again, I just wanna reuse the parts. The super easy project if anybody wants to do it at home. Um, we can take a look at the code in a second, but again, it's just four microservers and some popsicle sticks. So I know coding and programming isn't for everybody, but we're just gonna take a quick up close look at the program I made. Really simple stuff for this one. Um, I made a bunch of constants for the end stops of all the servos of how far they should go on each direction. Um, it's good to make these constants so that if you can change it here and then you can use these names everywhere else in your program and then you don't have to go to each section and change all the variables. I didn't end up using all of these since I kept this program really simple just for demonstration purposes, um, but these were the general angles of rotation that I wanted to use. We have um, this different setting up for different pins I wanted to use, um, pins and variables for the joystick. So we have the serial begin since I was doing some testing in the serial monitor. And I made four servo objects. So we have the grabber, the elbow, the shoulder, and the bottom one, which was the rotate. Um, we just set some pin modes. Um, I think it's too exciting. So then for the joystick, we just have, I did joystick X and joystick Y for the X and Y axis. Um, so we're reading those over analog. And then for the button, the button is also on the joystick. So that is digital pin. And then we have the potentiometer, which is an analog. And then for when you have a joystick or a potentiometer or other things like this, they, um, when, when you have a digital input, they generally range from zero to 1023 um, from the raw data that you get from it. So if you wanna be able to use that data accurately on a servo motor or something else that only has, that has a smaller, uh, smaller range or a bigger range, you have to map it. So we mapped the potentiometer X and Y. So we just say that the data that we're getting is from zero to 1023, and we want that data to be remapped to zero to 180. So when we move that around, and if you compare the two values coming in and going out, you would see values from one, some zero to 123, and then you'd see their counterpart, counterparts from zero to 180. Over here, we just have some of the end stops where if, so we're saying if X, because X I have was controlling the, I believe it was the shoulder, yep, the shoulder. So if it goes further than it should be with the joystick, we just go to the upper and the same thing if you go too low. So then for a rotate, we just had right to Y since for the rotate, we only need to go from zero to 180. It shouldn't be a problem. We don't need any mins or maxes on that. And then for the elbow, we have the potentiometer. This is somewhere where I would also put those end stops, but chose not to for this case. The button work, this is how the button works over here if you want to close the grabber. So I have a boolean up top for open or close. So if the button, uh, this button is backwards for most buttons you see. So when you click it, click is low and open is high. So if the button is clicked, we want to set open or close to true. And then we have a little counter here. So we have the counter starts at zero, so it goes up to one. But if so, if we come back through this program and if we see, so we close the button again, if count goes up to two, we want to set it to false and reset count to zero. So this is going to get us our little T flip flop when we want to open and close the button or the grabber. So if we're saying that the grabber is true, we want to write to the grabber, go to lower and the lower is just zero. So that means to close it. Otherwise we want it to be open. So the other code down here is just to go through the rotations of each servo on their max and min. So we may see that in a moment. Um, and that's the that's the general idea of it. So about 76 lines if we're just going to go up to here. Um, again, this could be a lot better for writing this more professionally. For the second revision of this robot, I probably will do it differently and I'd be willing to share this code with anybody else who wants it. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little project I put together. Again, nothing too special, too crazy, but I hope it's a little bit of an intro to something, the type of content I like to do on the channel. So uh, I'll definitely let you know if I end up doing the bigger robot and I have some plans for other robots I like to do in the future if I get my hands on a 3D printer, which would be really cool. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. If you can, leave a like, it helps me a lot. Uh, otherwise than that, have a great day.